I'm Carrie, and I'm owner of Classic Cottage Art and Antiques in Bowling Green, Virginia, and I'm here today on my YouTube channel, Creating a Classic Cottage. So, have you ever run into the case if you've used Dixie Belle paint, Gator Hide top coat, and it streaks on you over dark colors in particular? I've had that problem, so I have used a lot of tips that I've discovered from our brand ambassadors, other retailers, and my own experience. And I want to give you a few tips on how to prevent or at least lessen the amount of streaking when you use gator hide over dark color. Here's what I did. I, if you want to find out how I got to this point of painting, go back and watch um, my powder room makeover. And I will try to link this in the description for you so you can find it easily. Basically clean. Uh, I primed with boss. In this case, I did want to say we have new boss in gray, which is great under dark colors. So that's what I used. <clears throat> because I had a slick surface on the side here that I can't get to show you, um, I used slick stick. So there you go. Painted two coats. And then here's my tip. Tip number one, chalk paint is extremely porous. So you'll find it to be a rough finish when it's dried. And I did make till it, wait till it dried completely. So what I do most of the time is I will burnish it. Now like burnishing just means going over the surface to kind of knock down what I call the fuzzies, but basically it's where the grain may have been raised or just the texture of the chalk paint itself. So what you can do is three different things. Well, four, if you want to be technical, you can do nothing and that'll be fine. But I like smooth finishes. So for dark colors, I'll, this one's been loved, but I use our finishing pad. Basically, I just go over it like so. And what that does is it kind of knocks down what I call the fuzzies. I don't know why, I just call them that. But um, secondly, you could use a high grit sandpaper. And on light colors, I do this. Um, I use 320 grit or higher. I like the higher grade, maybe 600. You can find that in the automotive section of your stores. Uh, your big box stores, your, you know, hardware stores and such. Um, that will knock down. It'll get really super smooth that way. The other option is to use brown paper. Brown paper bag, yes. You can use a brown paper bag um, or like the craft wrapping paper to burnish as well. And you will find, it, it's crazy, but it works. You're burnishing down this and it'll make it smooth, okay? So burnish it first. That will help get it smooth. Secondly, what I do, tip number two, is to use another clear coat first. Again, chalk paint is extremely porous, so the Gator High does dry pretty quickly, actually. And what happens is if you put it on, it starts to absorb and it may dry unevenly, which will leave your streaks, right? So I always try to put, and I got this from another retailer, and I don't remember who, so I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was, but, um, put another clear coat on. So you'll see here that I do have one coat of clear coat satin on. Satin's my favorite. It's very workable and it doesn't, um, for me, it doesn't streak as bad as Gator Hide. You might say, well, why not just do satin clear coat? Well, the satin clear coat is water resistant. Gator Hide is water repellent. Remember we're in a high water environment, highly damp environment. So, um, Water repellency is what I'm looking for. So I want to use the Gator Hide. The third tip I'm going to give you for using Gator Hide, I got this from another retailer. I apologize. I can't remember who it was. I put my Gator Hide in hot water. Now there's only a little bit of hot water in here because of the displacement, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to warm up the Gator Hide. I want it to be a nice Warm, cons uh, warm consistency is the best way I can explain it. It just moves better. And it's been sitting here for just a few minutes and it'll get warm. And do this even in the summertime because sometimes you will find that you have a lot of air conditioning and it will get cool. Now, tip number four, do not shake your top coats. Reason being, it will introduce air into them, which will cause bubbles, which will leave a bubbly finish on your project. Not cool. So this is a brand new jar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stir my gator hide. So I'm going to take a popsicle stick or a plastic spoon or something. And what you wanna do is you wanna stir and get it all off the bottom. I wouldn't stir very fast because, well, you're gonna introduce air again and that's not what you want. So just stir until it's 
completely mixed because what happens it settles to the bottom and it kind of doesn't work as well for water repellency and it also I believe it streaks worse if you don't stir it up well now some people are going to ask can you spray gator hide the answer is yes but I like to do tutorials because not everybody has a paint sprayer but if you are a paint sprayer yes you can in fact spray gator hide and it sprays beautifully so it's pretty well mixed up now yep see it's all nice and mixed up now and here's another tip for you I don't like to use it from the jar what I almost always do is I will pour it in a paper plate or this is actually a plastic plate and I'm gonna make a mess here because I'm doing it on camera and you really don't need a lot I'll tell you what the other tip is now I'm going to sit this back in my warm water to keep it kind of warm because I may have to go back in it and get some more. Now normally what I do is I have a damp sponge and I'm going to get it with my spray bottle here because I forgot to do that earlier. Some people say dry. I actually prefer to apply it wet or damp with a damp sponge. Now when I say damp sponge I mean damp. I don't mean soppy wet. Just enough to to know that it's wet okay nice and damp here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the gator high of the sponge and the type of sponge that I'm using is just a dollar I think dollar tree sponge um, we also sell um, the blue sponges and when I'm using doing this on a square surface I actually like the square then I can kind of tell where I've been and I hope my gator high hasn't gotten too cool me talking here but I'm going to put it in here like so and then I'm going to scrape off the excess. Okay. And you can hardly tell that there's any on there, but there is. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick where I'm going to start. And for right now, make sure there's no dust on my cabinet. I'm going to start like this. And I'm just going to go down. And it'll probably go out of camera. And it's on fairly thickly. And I'm going to stop unless I've got a big blob somewhere. If I've got a big blob, then I'm going to have to go back over it. I'm going to make sure I don't have any drips here. And I'm going to go back in, right? Dip some more. And I'm going to put even pressure all the way down, just slightly overlapping that last one. What you don't want to do is you don't want to go back and forth and overwork it because you will introduce streaks. Okay. I think I have enough for one more. Just nice, even pressure. I'm gonna go under here and make sure I don't have any drips because gator hide doesn't yellow on its own, but if you have it pulled, sometimes it will turn a yellow color. Not cool. So now what I'm gonna do, make sure I don't have any big blobs anywhere. Gator hide's really good at self-leveling, so that's gonna be good. I don't know if you can see, but it's already a little, if I can get you in here. And see, I did get on a little thick here, so I'm just going to very gently go back. And that's also why I tend to put it on thicker. But I did have some blobs. Okay. I probably still have enough on my sponge to do this, so I'm going to go this way. And really make sure that you don't have any drips and things here. And then I'm going to go down this way. And see, I haven't even gone back into my, um, my plate yet. So it goes a long way. And I'm gonna go this way, and this is why I like to run, use it with it when it's damp. So I can see what I'm doing here. Going across the bottom, sorry, I can't see. It's out of frame, probably. And now I'm gonna do this right here, which will help get any drips, I think, that may have been introduced the other way. And I'm missing some spots, so I am going back. here and I'm going to go back here right I'm missing spots is why I'm going back but don't try not to be tempted to go back and forth like this because you will introduce streaks as a matter of fact I think I have one right there not a problem if you have streaks on your first time through here not a problem because your second coat will get rid of that another tip if you have streaks 
and I don't often do this, but I have, you can add one tiny, tiny drop of the same color of paint. In my case, I would add Hurricane Gray and very slightly, just slightly tint it because if you add too much paint in, in that little tip, um, what you're doing, you're basically adding just more paint that has clear coat in it. So you just want to just the tiniest, tiniest drop of paint. Although I find when I'm doing it this way, I don't usually have a problem. So I'm going to check my corners here to make sure I don't have any big blobs and drips. And my lighting isn't too great, but we'll see what's going on. And I'm going to go up here and do this one before it dries. And then I'm going to go through here and do this. Oops. And I'm even going to go under here. Now, close that back up for now. So don't forget now when you're doing this to go down and do your kick plate as well. Because your kick plate is very important that you um, get that sealed as well. So basically, I'm going to go back up here. Now, for your second coat, which I'm not going to be able to show you right now because it's not dry. This needs to dry absolutely completely. It doesn't take very long, although it's damp here where I'm filming today. It doesn't take all that long, but you want to give it a couple of hours of dry time in between because you don't want to start causing it to streak if it hasn't dried all the way underneath, okay? So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go this way, right? And I missed a spot down here. I'm going to go up here, and just like that, I'm creating a streak-free finish. So I've got a little bit of a streak right here. You probably can't see it. I don't know that you can see what that's doing. Probably not. Ah, there we go. Um, but it's streaking because it's drying super quick. Not a problem. I'll catch it on the second coat. And I'm going to continue to do the whole rest of my cabinet and the drawers over here and finish it. The second coat, and I'm probably not going to bore you with the second coat, but I'm going to tell you how to do it. The second coat, you noticed I went down this way. Okay, for the second coat, once this is completely dry, I'm going to take and go from the bottom up, right? And then whichever way I went this way, I'm going to go the opposite direction. What that does for you is it sometimes you lose pressure when you go down to the bottom and you don't have as much pressure or you don't have as much product on your sponge. What that does is it catches and kind of fills in some of the streaks that may have started from coat one. I'm going to do that the whole way over. And if you want to, you can burnish or sand in between coats. I generally don't, but some people like to. I just don't. Um, but you can. And the third coat, the recommendation is to do three thin coats. Now that's the thing, thin. You want to do these thin coats. Three thin coats to have good water repellency. So that's what I do on the third coat. So first coat we went down, second coat we came up, third coat we're going to go down again. Always resist the, the temptation to go back and forth if you see a spot you've missed. Resist that temptation. I learned that one the hard way. So what happens if my gator hide does streak after I've done all that? You can do a couple things. Number one, you can put a fourth coat on it and put the little bit of paint like I described earlier. Um, the next thing you could do is you could use... Um, very, 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 very fine steel wool, and you could buff it out. You could do that. I have done that as well. Um, but so far, this particular technique has worked really well for me. So I hope you got some benefit out of it. So I'll see you in the next video. Hey, I'm back, and I'm ready to do my second coat of gator hide on my bathroom cabinets uh, on a dark color. Remember, we're talking about dark colors. Um, I was really happy, though, because I don't know that you can see very well, but I'm looking and there are very few streaks. I mean, maybe a couple right here, but very tiny. You almost have to really look really hard. So this process is really good for streak-free streak -free finish um, with gator hide on dark colors. I did want to remind you, though, that this is a water-based product, just like the paint and the primer and all the things that I've used so far. They're water-based products. So it was going to take 
30 days for this to cure, even with the gator hide now, because it is a water-based product, as I said, and it takes that many days, 21 to 30 days, for the water to evaporate out of this product and bond to your piece. So just remember, you've still got to be pretty careful with it, and I'm going to show you what happened. I don't know if you can see. Right up in here, and I don't know that you can tell, uh, when I washed out my sponge after my first coat, evidently I dripped right there and I can see where it made a little bit of a mark right through my gator hide because it wasn't dry all the way and it wasn't cured. So just remember even though you put the gator hide on it, be kind of still careful with it so that it doesn't, um, the water doesn't reactivate the gator hide which is kind of what happened here and so that you have a beautiful finish. What I've been doing, let me show you, oops, because we still use the sink, is I've got one of these, and it looks like a hot mess right now, but it's got the plastic on one side and it's kind of like a, it's a drop cloth and it's fabric on this side. So I've been putting this soft side up against my cabinets and the plasticky side facing out. So if I were to, and I've taped it with blue tape on top of the countertop here so that if water does get dripped until this is cured, I, um, it's protected. So that's something you can do also, just to protect your work so you don't have to redo it over again. So um, I'll do that tonight. I'll wait, I'm gonna put my second coat on and it's kind of late this evening, so I'll probably just get one more coat on today. But um, then tonight, once this is dry to the touch now, it won't be cured, but it'll be dry to the touch, I'm gonna put that drop cloth back around it so that I don't spill water on like I did before. So those are just a few tips and stay tuned for the finished project. Thanks for watching. 